<clears throat> Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here. And you remember the box that looked like this to begin with? Well, we transformed it into a box that looks like this. All right, pre, post, pre and post. Now there is a couple of things I wanted to point out right now at this stage of the game before I get any further. Uh, one of them is check out this awesome headstock. This is a scarf jointed neck with the wings or ears as some people call them. Um, and this does have a uh, kind of a special shape there. I did pick for the veneer, I picked uh, one of those inserts that actually had like the logo burned into it. And um, man, it came out really nice. Um, I did pre-stain the fretboard before gluing it on so that there would be distinction between the actual fretboard and the neck itself. Now, a, a lot of detail has gone into this thing here, so I, uh, I'm going to point some stuff out here. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't, but uh, you can see some of the file marks in here. Uh, let's see on the back side here. Maybe you can see it on this side here. I uh, left some of these file marks in there intentionally. Yeah, you can probably see it really close up in there. So this is sanded all the way down to 2000 grit sandpaper on the back here and steel wooled. Um, but I didn't um, get all of the little file marks out of there. And the reason being is because I like the effect um, of having those file marks in there but yet having it like really smooth. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out here is these patina corners here, and I left this one, there's no screw here. Actually, um, yeah, a couple of things, but here, I want to just talk about this one here first, is that, so I did pilot holes in here with the long drill bit. Um, and, it, and the reason being is because I wanted it to go all the way through into, the, into this wood down below here. So it's, I've had um, experiences here where if you don't pilot these guys here, then these little um, joints right here kind of explode. So make sure that you pilot um, before you um, drill. And then I get these long screws. And these long screws are so that they go all the way through into the meat underneath there. Okay. So this is very important. And when you, and when you pilot, what I do is, is I make sure that the, the, the bit is thinner than, than the actual screw itself. And that is so that the, the teeth of the screw can actually bite into the wood. If, if you drill it out too wide, then it's just going to strip and it's not going to, it's not going to grab. Um, and I always do this hand. I don't, I don't get the drill gun out for this particular um, procedure. And the reason being is because I don't want to have any accidents at this stage of the game. And you can really feel it. I can feel it biting. Okay, so I might, as far as I can go there, I might need to... Uh, Yep, I might need to drill out just a little bit more. Okay, so it's okay. It's a painstaking process. You don't want to rush anything. You don't want to force anything. But I'm really liking the way that the um, that these corners are looking. Just rusty, and they complement the rust. Tina on the F hole. I got the large solder burns. Oh my gosh, this thing is just going to be a dream. Oh yeah, I did want to show you this first before I drilled for the um, the tuners and the bushings because once I do that, then this little logo is going to be interfered with. 
So that's where we're at now. This one here does have a, a mystery and a battery. All right, coming together quite nicely if I do say so myself. Okay, we got the strings on and we are stretching. And I am tuned EBE. Uh, a couple things to notice here is that because these holes in the sh in the uh, hinge were offset, I had to have like a special nail for each one. So that's just kind of a an afterthought. So the uh, spacing and the location of these was strategic so that as to not mess too much with that logo. So I think it turned out all right. And of course I do have the other ones. So I have all eight corners buttoned up now. So the only thing I lack now is a uh, strap button and a strap. Oh, I did put the, the hinges back on here. So you'll notice uh, we do have a battery in here. Listen, listen to this. So in order to solve that little problem, what I do is I get a pick. Here's one of my Intel picks. And kind of put it in there. Actually, I'm going to need to put two in there. Okay, to start off with, this does have an internal spring. So that's the piezo. Here is the single coil. both in the middle. Okay, so now you start monkeying with this guy here. strings are still stretching. Next click. Next click.
turn it down and spare the neighbors. And then there's some delay. Thank you.